What's going on everyone? So this is gonna be a quick video about my Buick Grand National. Uh, bought it a couple months ago. Um, <clears throat> had a couple problems with it. Nothing serious, but uh, just needed, you know, like a basic tune-up. It wasn't running right. Uh, the biggest thing was it had some really old gas in it. It was like varnished up gas. So I pumped all that out of it. Uh, put some new fresh gas in there. Did an oil change and uh, and I ran it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, did a couple other cosmetic things to it. Uh, some new carpet and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, you know, I got it pretty much, you know, ready to go. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it. But then I started noticing some some oil burning. Um, not only was the oil burning, but what else was happening was it was was leaking through the downpipe. So, let me see if I can get you. This is an issue that I discovered, and if anybody else has a Grand National, this is kind of something you might run into. Um, as you can see, I have the turbo off right now. And there's the old one right there. Here's the new one. Got it from, where did I get it from? GN1 Performance. So, went and got a brand new turbo. Um, I went with stock size only because from what I was told and one the research I've done, this replica turbo comes with an adjustable wastegate actuator. These turbo stock are capable of going up to about 22 pounds of PSI. So unless you plan on going higher than 22 pounds, to be honest, the stock turbo is more than enough. If you really needed to, you could get a turbo actuator or a wastegate actuator, unlike this one, with an adjustable rod, and you could just turn it up. Obviously, you'll have to get it tuned, bigger injectors, things like that to run more boost. But um, what I've discovered is this stock Garrett turbo, which I'm going to keep for the sake of having, you know, all original parts for the car. Um, the inside shaft is bad, so I'm thinking the bearings in here have gone bad because it started sucking oil through this way and sucking oil through the intake. Um, and I found that out by taking this bad boy off the intake pipe. And I don't know if you can see, it is just loaded with oil. really see too well might not be able to see it but it, i mean it's caked in there it's it's just straight oil um so i did a little research and you know did some troubleshooting and i discovered that essentially two things went bad the turbo and the pcv valve was completely blocked off which i know in this car is very important to have because you have a lot of blow by uh cylinder pressure from the turbo you'll get a lot of blow by into the crankcase and you got to have some kind of evacuation this was plugged off, and for some reason they plugged off the PCV, so it was getting no ventilation. Um, but, coincidentally, the turbo was starting to go bad anyway, so the bearings in there are riding and grinding. So, I went ahead and got a new turbo. While I was at it, I got an oil filter and a new turbo feed line. So, this will go on top of the turbo. And then, I also got the new drain line because this... The original, which I'm going to show you if I can, the originals are just like this weird, perf I don't want to say perforated, it's uh, kind of like a tin can metal, like pot metal, and they're known for cracking and leaking, which this one, in fact, has been doing a lot. Um, let's see, it was right here, I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about, see that kind of metal? Usually that bend right there. That's where it happens. It gets a little crack in there and it just it leaks oil all over the engine. And there's a little sensor on the crank and it gets covered in oil and causes all kinds of problems. So I went ahead and just got a new one of those to replace that as well. And don't have to worry about it. So I will actually do another video um, once I have the new turbo and everything good to go and it's running. I'll do a full-blown walk around. I'll have it washed up and cleaned. I'll pull it out and I'll do a full-blown walk around. And, um, you know, details and show you guys everything on this car because this is my, this is my pride and joy. I love it. Um, it's front end parts from the other car. So, um, if any of you watched my videos before, you'll know I actually have another Regal. Um, it's more so of a clone. It's actually a T-Type, but it didn't come with an engine or transmission. So, what I did was I decided to take that one and 
slap this high compression big block nitrous motor inside that car and uh, it's currently getting a roll cage put in it right now as we speak so that's why it's not in the garage but got a whole plethora of parts here for it so once that comes back in I'll have to most likely move that car over here and then I'll have the Grand National further over there so I'll have both cars squeezed up inside the garage here and I'll still have room for my tools obviously and necessities but yeah once I get it pulled out like I said cleaned up and running I'll do a really good walk around video of the interior under the hood all around it give you guys a really good view of it um, show you everything and you know essentially do an introduction because I don't feel like I've done one yet with this car so but anyway that's uh that's my current update for now and I'll post another video when I got it all done and fixed and maybe I'll even get one of me actually putting it in so I can give some hints and tips on how to do it because I know when I was learning this stuff it was kind of hard people really didn't have videos of it and they're starting to come around a little bit more and more but I feel like maybe I can add my little twist to it and help give some details and little pointers here and there so but anyway stay tuned guys I'll have another video out soon see you